Hi, this is Vijay Kumar from Nourish Technologies. In today's session, I am explaining about uh, collections in PLSQL. Okay. So, uh, what is the collection and what is the importance of collection? So, a collection is a, a group of elements of uh, same type like uh, arrays in programming languages like C language Java. So, you call it as array, but here we call it as collection. So, that allows group of elements of same data type. So, in PLSQL you declare a variable like this for example, x number of 4 you declare a variable uh, and this type of variable is called scalar variable. Why? Because it allows only uh, one element. So, this is called scalar, but uh, collection allows what group of elements. So, into this variable x you can store a number, the number of how many digits means 4 digits, 4 digits number can be stored into this x. So, it allows one element and this type of variable is called scalar variable, but collection variable allows group of elements. So, in PLSQL collections are three types, one is a PLSQL table, this is also called index by table and the second one is VRA and third one is nested table. So, collections are three types, PLSQL table are index by table, VRA, nested table. So, then first we will see PLSQL table, next we will see VRA and nested table and next we will discuss the differences. Then, so, but all these three are arrays only. So, all these three are belongs to collections, okay. all these three allows group of elements of same type, but there are some differences, we will see the differences later. First we will start with PLSQL table, then if you want to use PLSQL table in PLSQL program, first you want to declare PLSQL table type, first you declare the type and next declare what variable, variable of that type. Okay, if you want to declare, if you want to use PLSQL table, first declare the PLSQL table type, next declare the variable. So, how to declare the PLSQL table type? To declare the type, you have to follow this syntax. So, what is that is type type name, type type name is table of, is table of data type, next index by data type. Okay, type type name is table of data type index by data type. So, this is type declaration. So, before we use that type, first you need to declare the type. So, how to declare the type by using this keyword type keyword. Type type name is table of data type index by data type. So, what is this data type and what is this data type? So, here array contains elements. So, in array you store elements, group of elements. So, this data type uh, is element data type, okay. this data type is element data type and this data type is index data type. So, one is element data type, one is index data type. Suppose here I declare this as number, I declare this as number. So, that means in array you want to store numbers. Suppose here I declare this as where cat 2. So, that means in array you want to store strings, if this is date that means in array you want to store dates. So, and here element index data type, so what is the index by, index by also can be any type, okay. Then, so suppose if I, if I declare index as binary integer, then what does it mean? So, your index is integer type, so element can be any data type and index can be any but here if I declare index as binary integer that means index is integer type. Suppose for example, I want to declare one array in that array I want to store numbers then you declare like this. Suppose type name is array, A name can be anything this is user defined you can give any name is table of number, table of number 3, number 4 and index by binary integer. So, what is the meaning of this declaration is? you are creating your own data type, the type name is array, the type allows group of elements, 
the type allows group of elements and each element is what number type and so because you declared table of that means this type allows table of elements that means group of elements array of elements and each element is number 4 and the elements are accessed by using index value and the index data type is binary integer then so you declared a type here now I want to use this type so declare a variable x x is one type array type so what is x x is called collection and array is collection type okay x is called collection array is collection type into this x I want to store some elements then you have to write like this so x of 1 equals to 10 that means the value 10 is stored at index value 1 x of 2 equals to 20 the value 20 is stored at index value 2 and x of 3 equals to 30 the values 3 is stored at index value 30 so value 10 stored at index value 1 value 20 is stored at index value 2 value 30 is stored at index value 3 so this is how to use array in uh, PLSQL first step declare the type and declare the variable next store the elements okay suppose uh, I want to store database values in array I want to get the elements from database I want to store the elements in array so suppose for example what I want to store in arrays I want to store the department names I want to get the department names from the department table I want to store the department names in array so then I declare like this like array so what is this array is for example d name array is table of so what do you want to store in array I want to store strings then I am declaring as var cat to 20 index by binary integer so in array I want to store the department names so I am declaring a type d name array this allows table of elements each element is var cat to 20 and the elements are accessed by using index value and index data type is binary integer so next but uh, this is type but I need a variable for store the data so I am declaring a variable d d name array then so what is d is d is a variable okay next you can get the elements from database and you can store the elements in d so the program is there here now let us see this so I, I declared a d name type d name array so this allows array of uh, strings and I declared a variable d and d is d name array what is d name array it allows table of elements group of elements each element is a string of 20 characters now what I want to do is I want to get one by one department name from the department table so I am taking a for loop and this loop runs four times and every time this loop executes I am getting one department name from the department table and storing the department name into array now suppose here uh, see the department table for example select star from department so first time this loop runs i value is 1 so where department number equals to 1 into 10 so 1 into 10 means 10 so this query will select the 10th department name and it is assigned at d of 1 so what are the elements stored at index value 1 accounting next time i value is 2 so where department number equals to 2 into 10 and department number equals to 20 this query will select the 20th department name assigned to d of 2 so what are the elements stored at index value 2 20th department name that is research next i value is 3 3 into 10 30 where department number equal to 30 this query will select the 30th department name and assign to d of 3 so what is the 30th department name is sales and that is sales assigned at d of 3 next time i value 4 40 what is the 40th department name is operations that is assigned at d of 4 so every time this loop runs you are fetching one department name from the department table and storing the department name into array so next after that i am printing the elements of array dbms output put line d of 5 okay so first time it prints d of 1 what are the elements stored at index value 1 accounting next time it prints d of 2 what are the elements stored at index value 2 research next time it prints d of 3 then that is sales like this so every time loop runs you are printing one department name so let me run this program now 
but before you run this set the server output to on. So, it is printing accounting research sales and operations, but here the problem is here. So, every time this loop runs the select statement is executed the select statement submitted to oracle server oracle server execute the select statement return the values. So, the number of requests going to the server increases performance degrades and this logic will work for department table, but not for other tables because in department table department numbers are multiples of 10, but in if you go to some other table may not be multiples of 10 and they, they may not be in sequence. So, this logic works for department table then and here there are two problems here one is a performance problem and another one this logic ok. Then, so to overcome this performance problem then uh, one is introduced what is that is called that is called bulk collect what is that is called bulk collect. So, using bulk collect you can fetch all the elements from database and you can store the elements in collection. So, with the help of bulk collect in a single request we can fetch all the elements from database you can store the elements in collection. So, that means using this bulk collect so uh, number of trips to the database server reduces and performance will be improved ok number of requests going to the database servers are reduced and performance will be improved. So, using this bulk collect then how to use bulk collect let us see this example then. So, here in the previous program I am fetching one by one department name. So, storing the elements in collection now in this program I am using bulk collect see this in a single request I am fetching all the department names from the department table and storing the department names into collection D. So, here how many requests will go to server one request and this returns all department names and all the department names are assigned to this collection D. So, this reduces the number of trips going to the server and improves performance. Next what I am doing is I am printing the elements of D. So, here uh, but I do not know the number of elements assigned to D Maybe uh, for the first time I run maybe number of elements assigned to D is uh, 4 uh, after maybe after one week if I run the program maybe number of elements assigned to D's will be uh, 10 maybe after some time maybe number of elements assigned to D will be 20. So, the number of elements assigned to this D changes from day to day then, but if you see this for loop this loop runs only 4 times. Suppose assume number of elements assigned to D is uh, 10, but this loop runs 4 times. So, it will not print the remaining 6 elements. So, number of elements assigned to D is 20 but this loop runs 1 to 4 and this will print only first 4 elements, but not prints the remaining 16 elements. But I want to run this loop as many times as many elements are assigned to D then. So, then what you have to say you have to say D dot first dot dot D dot last what is D dot first returns index value of the first element what is D dot last returns index value of the last element assume number of elements assigned to D is 10 then d dot first returns 1 and d dot last returns 10 assume number of elements assigned to d is 20 then d dot first returns 1 and d dot last returns 20. So, every time this loop runs and it prints the total number of elements in the collection d let me run this, but result wise you do not find any difference you will find the difference in performance. So, accounting research sales and operations ok. So, this is how to use bulk collect in collections ok. So, thank you for watching this video for more videos subscribe to Narayshite.